Buckle up, Buttercup, there's fuckery to discuss. A writer, an editor, and a reader walk into an indie bookstore and start an unhinged indie monster and alien smut podcast, because why the fuck not? Hello! Welcome to our, what is this, the fifth episode of our podcast, Smutty Stories, where we talk about all sorts of monsters and smut. And this month, February... It's a very special month because we're talking about our favorite monster. We put this off for a long time instead of getting way too excited at the very beginning. Um, it's orcs. Mm-hmm. It's orcs. So welcome. And we have a lot of books to share with you guys. Uh, if you've noticed our posts on Instagram and social media, we're, we have listed and presented a bunch of orcs for your reading pleasure we have. Uh, with a bunch of different authors. And uh, we've got a, a whole lot of orcs for you today. Yay! Huzzah. Let's first, let's start off with why we love orcs. What is it that you love the most about orcs, Jen? Okay, so orcs come with, like, you got a variety of orcs, but generally you got, you got a size difference for sure. Any orc is going to be at least 6'5", so, which, big fan. Um, If not taller. Yeah. I tend to like my aliens or mythical creatures to be more on the humanoid side and orcs definitely are. They're not like a, like a spider or a bear. Um, um, I, um, I like uh, their, so there's, there's a bunch of tropes or traits that a lot of orcs share. There's a breeding kink that tends to be uh, there, which we know I'm a big fan of. It's more on the primal side, which we know I'm a big fan of. <laughs> i actually even like the tusks i don't i don't know what I, they work for me what other commonalities do we have amongst orcs that uh, uh they tend to be a little bit uh, they tend to be aggressive which i'm uh, this feels Dominant. like what is jen into let's just list it all <laughs> sorry the reason why i keep laughing is because you said bears and i immediately thought about the grizzly shifter and the squirrel shifter it just keeps coming back to haunt me. <laughs> <sighs> so, I mean, I know that there are people that are really into like, like the spiders or the robots or oh, whatever, yeah. but I, I tend to really like my aliens or magical creatures to be closely it, it, more humanoid. Um, I, I want them to be bigger and better, which yeah. orcs are. I mean, orcs tend to be a lot more buff considering um, Mm -hmm. they tend to be, I mean, the different types of societies vary, but definitely like size difference. Like you said, there's a lot more of a dom sub dynamic. Yes. So with the orcs generally being more dom Mm -hmm. and um, there's also very much the touch her hand or him and die vibes Mm -hmm. or they that touch Mm -hmm. them and die, which I am a big fan of. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And also, you know, being somebody who is six foot one and not exactly skinny and knowing that this creature could pick me up, throw me over their shoulder and just go like it's nothing. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm good with that. Yeah. It's like, oh, what is this Viking time? Are you going to page yes. my village? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, has anybody written Viking orcs? Wait, you are, that's, ma'am. That's what you're I'm doing. Writing. That I'm like right I, I, now, woman. I am doing that. I'm. I'm yes. just not. I don't know. That? <laughs> that's what you're doing. I'm what writing Scottish. You're writing <laughs> Norse. I am writing Viking orcs. We'll get to that in a little bit. Yes, we okay. will in a little bit. So, yeah. um, I, I I take it we're all pretty much in the words of our executive producer, like aching for a porking by an orc. Yeah. yeah 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 for sure mm-hmm. smash absolutely smash totally <laughs> yes yeah i i know orcs are pretty popular right now so are gargoyles but uh yeah. orcs are more popular it. than gargoyles i think in the moment like there's a I lot would, well, they, they are more out yeah yeah there there's definitely more um orc content available than gargoyle content but i i can tell you that the commonality of anybody that loves the gargoyles watched the cartoon as a kid yeah yeah he was hot i don't even know what it was called Thank was you. it just called gargoyles it was called gargoyles yeah he was hot yeah i know <laughs> um, 
I said something like that at work the other day and people looked at me. Oh, I said the fox um, from Robin Hood is hot. Because yeah. he is. Because he, he is. And they looked at me like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I was like, no. They it's should you. not draw those animals that way. Okay? No. Because <laughs> I, I had a, a weird thing for, what was his name? Kovu from Lion King 2. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, Kovu's Scar. Got that, like dark. Right? <laughs> Well, Scar... uh, Kobe's like Scar's Scar's son, isn't he? Uh, I th- I think he got kind of adopted by Scar. I don't think he was officially Scar's son. Okay. I mean, you add he's a lion and he's got Jeremy Irons' voice. I mean, I'm married to a Brit. There's no way I'm fucked. Like, thank you, Scar. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like the Sludge Monster voiced by <laughs> Tim Curry. Tim Curry, yes. Uh, what was <laughs> What was his name? In Fern Gully? Yeah. Yes. Fern Gully was the first movie I saw in the theaters and I fell asleep. I was oh. five. Well, you were five. That's oh, okay. you were five. Okay, fine. You were five. I had I had a bizarre obsession with that movie. That's because I it's did a too. fucking awesome movie. Also Batty. Yeah. Batty. I, I, I watched that name. movie like last year or so and Bryson looked at me and was like, you do know they're pushing an agenda, right? No shit, dipwad. <laughs> let me it's, enjoy my nostalgia go <laughs> it's anti-deforestation what's wrong Basically, with that let's say it at the end in the credits i know what they're pushing let me enjoy the weird bat <laughs> it's like wally have you ever seen wally it's oh, like yeah. a, oh, yeah. such a commentary on a society like oh yeah well most a lot of kids movies <clears throat> are yeah but... i mean they're getting better like uh yeah. this most recent one was about like acceptance of your body like let's go there um uh it's either seeing red or raised i think it's seeing red and she gets her period um oh no that's just called uh wasn't it just called turning red turning red yeah she gets her period yeah Yeah. that that one was funny i identified with that a little hard though because of the relationship (laughs) with the mom i haven't seen it i know my girls have seen it i because they have disney plus on their tablets i haven't seen it but I it's know adorable. That that one it is good. It's adorable. So. I, I think you guys would enjoy it. It it it's 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 funny. Yeah. So, um, we were supposed to talk about orcs. Yeah. So yeah. Let's, let's back circle to back now. Yeah. <laughs> Please okay. <come> back. <laughs> All right. So, Carlotta, what are some of the things that are like kind of standard for an orc? Okay, so standard for an orc is definitely um, tends to be on the larger side, uh, it's especially with height, definitely muscular to, muscular in nature. There's tusks normally, especially like if you know World of Warcraft, the tusks are a big thing. Um, <laughs> there are, they usually they have like green or grayish green skin, although that is broadening. Um, and they usually are aggressive in nature, they have more of a, a dominant society where it's warlike and power hungry and things like that. Um, actually, the origination of orc, there's an instance of it in the Cleopatra glossaries by Thomas Wright from the 10th century. And then also um, it was put once in Beowulf. So okay. it's from a very long time ago. In, in a world far away but so close <laughs> they're also pretty heavy in D D. like oh yeah like oh um, yeah absolutely in terms of so... like media and everything it's movies mm-hmm. especially uh tolkien's works there's mm-hmm. um video games tabletop games like uh D. It, mm-hmm. it's prevalent everywhere because it makes a really good type of warring people that Mm -hmm. sometimes are utilized which is fucked up but utilized as like a blanket evil yeah so we were talking about i I thought my first introduction to orcs was the ones from tolkien which appear very slimy and i'm realizing as we're having this conversation that it was dungeons and dragons that was my first introduction to orcs because i played dungeons and dragons as a teenager so there were or- i was always a druid because i mean obviously but um there were orcs <laughs> um yeah, yeah. so the, actually in tolkien's works the what's funny is the orcs the goblins and the urukai are all the same thing There's just three different words for the same Mm -hmm. kind of beastie, which is funny in the movie because 
like also different they all look different right the the orcs yeah. uh range and like gen set are a little bit more slavey the urukai are the big like buff ones and then the goblins are like smaller and you know that they're Weird. just except for the like the orc king like that was a that was a hefty boy that was a big boy he he was a chunky boy yeah the goblin king. Did I say uh -huh. king i'm sorry goblin yeah king. i'm pretty sure it was goblin king the yeah. neck on him always just kind of that goiter it was yeah. the goiter yeah, but, I'm just um, gonna pretend that I've seen all of these movies. Don't tell anybody. We didn't finish watching it getting <laughs> far enough along in the Hobbits for you to see that part. Just so everybody knows, Jen came up to meet me and hang out, and I started trying to like bring her into the world of Tolkien, and we just ended up talking and drinking, so that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but we do need to fix the fact that she hasn't seen this. Yes, just yet. Yeah woman i'm sorry you've got i've got books where orcs are banging or i can watch tolkien like i that's there's a clear decision there for me i don't know <laughs> well you also haven't seen the urukai yet so true <laughs> it's, it's you're not making it sound very appealing they're tall and very there, buff. there's a couple of them that i can me personally, not so much, but I can fully understand why somebody would be writing a whole bunch of fan fiction. <laughs> I, I think that's where a lot of us started going down the route of fan fiction in terms of... Okay, okay. Because the Urukai, it's like definitely big, tall, growly, and mm -hmm. b buff. So, because what I've seen of Tolkien, I'll, I just remember the Orlando Bloom character, and it, he Legolas. was too too pretty for me. He was not He was an me. elf. That's why he was an elf. Yeah, he, elves are usually just overly Liv, pretty. Liv Tyler was yeah. an elf, so yeah, ah. she was very nice looking. She's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. <laughs> She's a gorgeous woman. Yes. Maybe, maybe yeah, I've seen parts of this and blacked it out. Ethereal for me. <laughs> yes, ethereal would be the word. I do. I'm. I'm not looking for an ethereal man. I'm looking for a man to haul me off to his cabin. She looks so proud right now that we do that word. <laughs> Well, there's that, but there's also the part like not only is it like the Urukai, but like I love me some dwarves. I'm I just do. <laughs> yes, yes, uh huh. They them thick boys. Yes, absolutely. Yes, plus they were also, funny. Aren't they like three feet tall though? And no, they're tall. They're like more like four or five feet, I think. Yeah, there okay, was like four or five short. feet. It was the, it was the hobbits. I think they were like three feet. Yeah, three to four feet is like the halflings. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. We're getting a little bit too in-depth in the world of Tolkien while we're trying to we talk are. about Tolkien. Okay. We are. Okay. Apparently we need to talk right about now. Tolkien in a mini soda or something later. Okay, so let's talk about everybody's first orcs. Okay. Because Jen, so... you were kind of talking about yours. Yeah. Uh, sure, sure. So my first orc uh, is by one of my favorite authors, and I actually have it right here. Um, oh, no. It is Thornstuff um this would be by carlotta hughes if you've ever heard of her um <laughs> so for those of you that are listening to us we are all holding up our copy of thorns dove thorns dove is carlotta's first book in her orc match, se match series it's a 0.5 if we want to get technical um and i was initially opposed to this because it starts off on planet earth um and the majority of the book is on planet earth and we know how i feel about planet earth <laughs> <laughs> kind of fucking sucks didn't want to give it a try but i carlotta uh said you know what sexy scottish space orcs and i was like well i okay then so that was my first orc um it's also my first nodding definitely not my first nodding but i'm pretty sure my first orc was also thorn and i was just happy to help a friend get her book done and i thorn's awesome i mean what can i say Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank and for you. those of you listening carlotta is just blushing and confused as hell as to what to do with her face <laughs> yeah so my first orcs other than being like tolkien and stuff um were piers anthony because i started reading those when i was like 11 12 and then also uh, a trilogy by morgan howell called queen of the orcs it was not a series that I liked the ending of. I was very, very put out and it put me off of orcs for a very long time. I forgot they existed actually until I, you know, relatively recently. So okay. we're glad you, that you rediscovered them, darling. Actually, really it was are. because of Finley Fenn. <laughs> Thank you, Finley Fenn. <laughs> 
<laughs> Other than Tolkien, thank you so fun. much. All right, so I think we have Jersey up first with her book. What which orc book did you choose of the multiple? Well, I I read three just this week, so um, <laughs> I I got it. I, it was stressful this week, and I needed to escape. And I did, and it was wonderful. Fantastic. Um, I so I did. I read three of them. I got uh, "Cupcakes for My Orc Enemy" by Honey Phillips, which oh, was it good? I I will say I will say this quickly because we've been talking about Honey Phillips a lot lately. So I'll say this bit quickly and then move on to the other two more in depth. It was really cute. You got to read it. Do it. Do it. Do it. It's adorable. do you have to read the do you have to read the other no, two first? You don't. Okay. It's very okay. It's okay. good to be. It's, it's it's a good standalone if you want to read okay. the other. Which I haven't yet. Go for it. But this one was really cute. It's a human uh, coffee shop owner and an orc baker who share a wall for their businesses, and he's not happy about it. It's adorable. Read it. Why is it? Um, she smells pretty. Like <laughs> he's used to being a loner, and she unintentionally almost sets the building on fire when they first meet. Oh, I, I yeah, that'll do this it, girl. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. I that he's not too chapel. he's not too thrilled about um the fact that she moved into the building because he wanted to uh expand his business into where she is at now. And yeah, okay. it's you read it, it's good, it's cute. So the second book that I read, uh The Orcs Fade and Mate by Elizabeth Austin. I enjoyed this <clears throat> I don't remember how many pages. It was um almost two hundred, I think. But for me, quick read but other people might take a little bit longer whatever totally up to you as to your speed for everything the two main characters are the woman the the, the human uh madeline jane which i i just kept thinking mary jane the entire time because that's where my brain goes yay me um and then brizor b-r-i-z-o-r brizor brizor he is the chief of his clan. He lives in a, a kind of a, a shielded realm, I guess is a good way to put it. There there are uh, barriers and walls put up thanks to the Fae to keep okay. humans out and keep them kind of protected because there's ogres and everything that are trying, things that are trying to kill you. And, and the, the orcs, their job is to keep that population down and to keep them away from going into the human realm but on occasion a human will slip through and that's what happened madeline jane madeline jane uh was going down the road with her fiance mm-hmm. and they were trying to go away for a weekend or something to connect again because he had been cheating uh, with one of his with, uh-huh, with one of his students i think Ew. He's a pro- college professor no Grow away the whole man. Yeah. <laughs> Trash. Um, I, I human. <laughs> <laughs> Why we love orcs so much? Yes. Okay. If it, if the guy is human, he's usually garbage. So as they're driving, no his his phone went off. She saw, and it was a uh not so appropriate picture of the girl he'd been cheating with. And I, I miss having you in bed with me or something like that. So she uh, told him to pull over and she got the fuck out. She just barrel rolled out of the car. That's what I would do. She, she didn't barrel roll. She <laughs> she screamed at him to stop the car and she just started walking and he's hollering back at her to get back in the car and she doesn't, she wanders into the woods and accidentally crosses over. Yes. I, I want to read this one. With, uh, the, yes. Next. The yes. <laughs> yeah. I like it. <laughs> And there, once again, this is one of the issues with a, a lot of orc books that I have read or heck, heck, anything that has to do with fate and mates. There are more males than there are females. This is the current problem of the realm for the orcs is that there are more males than females. So they have to travel around to the different clans to see if, hey, are you my mate? Because I'm lonely. Um, yeah. She wanders through and accidentally finds the the chief's younger brother, butt naked and bathing. And he picks her up and takes her to his his brother's hut. It's like she's already Still here. Naked? I don't think so. <laughs> As, even if so, it's like okay, okay. It's, okay. it's folks are it's okay with nakedness. Yeah, they're very okay with nakedness. Uh, they were um, 
he was part of a, a group, a hunting party trying to go after a certain beastie. I can't remember the name of it. It was not an ogre. It was something very different. It, unique troll? to this no oh, okay if it was again if it was a troll i would have remembered this one was different i can't remember so he was part of a hunting party and so he he had to get her one he didn't know where the the part the part was that she crossed through at because she shouldn't have been able to yeah. but the magic was weakening a little bit so that's why she was able to and he also knew it was like okay one i need to save this girl because we're we're hunting these beasts there could be one anywhere she actually does almost run into one. His his brother's been, the chief has been um a little on edge because uh he, he's getting older. He he hasn't found a mate and he's stressed because you know, he's got to take care of the clan. So he takes the, this woman who he's never seen before to his brother's hut. It's like, kill her, send her back, fuck her. Do whatever you need to, but do something. <laughs> That's a good brother. That's a good brother. There, right yeah and he kept her for himself instead he's like bro bro goat i know see i'm you, surprised see if she'll bury yeah. you <laughs> right this is a great brother <laughs> great wig man brysor just that's um he walks into his his home and sees her like nope that's mine that's my forever person get the fuck away which makes his brother giggle it's like okay i'm a pick on you but okay and she takes a little a little bit of time to kind of adjust but at the same time, she's like, with what I just came from, don't care. Do me. Yeah. All right. And with faded mates, you know, there's not, cheating's not really a thing. Yeah. And and for her, you know, she she's human, so she doesn't quite feel the, the mate bond the same way. Mm-hmm. But she understands mm-hmm. that she feels overly strongly for this guy. Mm-hmm. She's not sure why. She's like, I could just be insanely horny. Fair. Because I've had a, I've had a shit relationship for a while. Just fuck me and all right can i have i have a co- controversial opinion here right, right this is a <laughs> controversial bookish opinion one right. of my favorite tropes is insta love and i don't even care i don't, I don't even then you care. would enjoy this you would you would enjoy this, this that's would why totally i would like, be up I'm... your alley um <laughs> and one thing i found interesting about this Elizabeth Austin's world in this one uh, with the orcs is how they identify that they are a mated pair. The is the woman weird? gets you know a, a nice little ring or something. The the man, the male, gets a gold ring at the base of his dick. I love it. Here for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that never it That's doesn't awesome come me. off. That is that is affixed. Is it is it like a tattoo or an actual ring? No, it's a ring. That is a gold oh. ring that's affixed at the base. Uh-huh. On the shaft. Like a cock ring. At the top. Yeah, basically. Like a, a golden cock ring. That's very yeah. fancy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's kind of <laughs> really interesting. I'm just saying. Yeah, and he also, if I remember right, he also got um, piercings along his, which okay, I, hurt like I, hell. But he he did Jacob's it. Ladder. There you go. Yeah, he did it for the pleasure of his future mate. Whenever he found her, and he done did. So there you go. I have to leave and go read this book. So if we could um do this <laughs> podcast later, that would be great. There, there's so, there's a lot of I'm, there's a lot of fucking you you'll enjoy it. All right, Carlotta, do you want to talk about your book so that you read this month? Sure, I'd love to. Um. I read about five books by Finley Fenton. So she is like the grandmaster currently of orcs. And um, if I'm honest, between Ruby Dixon getting me back into reading romance and um, Finley Fenton with orcs, I would not have written my spicy Scottish space orcs. <laughs> So Thank wanted... you, Ruby Dixon and Fenley Fen. We love you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You brought the three of us trash cats together. Well, yeah. yeah. Amen. This, Amen. This wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. <laughs> Thank you. Shout out. So the books of Finley Fens that I read were uh, The Lady in the Orc, the, uh, the Heiress in the Orc, The Librarian in the Orc, The Duchess in the Orc, and The Midwife in the Orc. So um, there are more books in the series, uh, The Maid and the Orcs, uh, The Governess and the Orc, I think just came out. And then there's uh, The Beauty and the Orcs, which is coming out in like August. Plus there's like a 
a short called the sins of the orc i think um and then i think there's like a a couple of there's like a holiday one and then another one that's she's sort of quite like prolific on the orc front very oh. prolific but her, her uh orc sworn series takes place in in a fantasy land a fantasy world and there is this mountain and mountain range so it's like the humans versus the orcs and there's orc mountain and the inside of this mountain is basically a it's like think think lord of the rings with the the dwarves there's all these tunnels and rooms and and everything else it's all interlocked and and um there's everything from like a, there's a walled garden area just outside there's um armories and there's like baths and libraries and everything, everything you else. need or could think of is in the mountain yeah and it's it's yeah. a great like naturally defended space from humans wow. and everything and but in um in this world orcs there are no female orcs so the way the orcs continue on their kind is by mating with women human women thus the abductions happen and there have been um a lot of wars between the humans and the orcs over this the series starts off with lady nor she is her her lord nor is an asshat he is he is he is he's an asshat he's terrible like throw the whole man away um <laughs> and she's uh, one of the reasons why i liked lady nor is because she's like tall and statuesque and so it's not considered a beauty by human standards, but, but for orc standards, it's like, oh, that's nice. Um, but the orc king, Grimar, basically makes a ploy because Lord Nor is his rival and enemy to abduct Lady Nor and use her as a gambit. So before I get any further, there are a lot of dark themes and elements within uh, the Orc Sworn series. So please make sure you check out Trigger Warnings because there are some things that are like, oh, okay. Because uh, the, the Orcs are, of course, an aggressive by nature Bunch. and very like tribal oriented and everything. And there is some misogyny in there. So just be, be aware. Yeah, the first book, there's some exhibitionism that happens. So, so you guys are aware. <laughs> it, it's kind of cute because it's almost that Lady Nor kind of wins over all of these orcs. And instead of just using her as a pawn entirely, like she gets, she's is like for the cause. She becomes for the cause. Nice. But the, um, the one element that is prevalent in each book is that usually there is a, without the the woman's consent really there's this sort of element of political maneuvering or something without her knowing or being explained to or anything like that so that that's like a main communi miscommunication thing that happens and i have nearly thrown the book because i have been very pissed off about that i'm like no why my tism says i'm angry <laughs> but i loved I, I loved all of the books they always end up with an aga so it's great um you get to learn about the different characters and everything um like with the librarian the orc there's a a librarian and she knows all this stuff and this orc keeps coming in so that's pretty kind of cute and there's a whole bunch of kinks and spice that gets explored within the entire series um my favorite though has to be midwife in the orc i heard that was good oh it's so good because the the midwife she's just like trying to make sure everybody's okay and like keeping people from being stressed out and there's a there's an orc couple and the the woman is pregnant and the male orc won't do her because she's pregnant because they think he's gonna harm the baby oh. and she thinks he doesn't love her anymore oh no she ends up talking to them and be like no in her in her house and like <laughs> no 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 you can you can go do the thing and it will be fine really i'm a midwife i know these things and you're not gonna poke <laughs> the baby in the face you're okay would you like a diagram they, um... they literally go back into her bedroom and fucking break the bed that um, poor midwife but the, the 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 my favorite part though is uh the orc is like he's very funny and sassy 
and I love that in general, but he takes the midwife and they're hiding in a tree, right? And the orc just is just like, shh, watch this. Hisses onto one of the people who's looking for her. And it's just like, he's like, it's raining. <laughs> they're, they're like trying not to die laughing. And I'm laughing my ass off because that becomes a running joke. <laughs> it's raining. Um, it's but yeah, one of the things that's really big too is fluids. The orcs come a whole... This is where Bucket o Come comes from, is from Finley Fenn's books. Because yeah, yeah. A lot of gum. So, yeah. Okay, so I I started the first book and I did not finish because uh, these are high angst. And uh, if you've if you've been around these parts, you know, I don't I don't do high angst. I, I have high anxiety. So I am so happy for the fact that Finley Fenn has like put orcs to the for forefront because uh, there have been so many good orc books created, but these are... These are not my cup of tea because they stress me out. Um, but I know that so many people love them. So I am very supportive of uh, the Orkland that she has created. I love her books. I'm looking forward to reading the next couple of books because yeah, I'm a little bit behind, but I've enjoyed all of them that I've read. So, well, we can actually, so my favorite Orc book is actually <laughs> dedicated to Finley Finn. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. This is um, Ruby Dixon's Half Orcs Maiden Bride. Um, and when I got it, I was, it says, for Finley Finn, who writes the best orcs around. Ruby Dixon is more my speed. She writes much lighter, uh, much uh, just lower angst. Um, and so this we have a human woman who um, cannot uh, find a husband because she is significantly taller than her dad. Her dad is an asshat um, and he is broke and doesn't have any sort of dowry, even though he, like he's an old lord. Um, they don't have any money anymore. So he decides to sell her um, off to be married. And she's super pumped about it because all she's ever wanted is to be married. And Ruby actually talks about this in the um, in the afterward about how she wanted a a woman that just liked womanly things and that was okay. Like she didn't have to be like, I'm not like other girls. She's like, I like sewing, fuck you. Um, and- post-apocalyptic so <laughs> life skill, excuse you. Exactly. <laughs> can stab things a million times and nobody questions me. <laughs> So, you know, they're traveling to meet her husband that she's been sold to, and she just wants him to be like a, a kind, handsome man, and she wants him to be tall. And that's all she wants. She, but she has no idea what she's getting into. Um, and she gets there yeah, and do. he's, yeah. And her, um, her father has sold her to a half orc um, that has bought an old manor house and needs a lady um, to like legitimize his claim. Even though he's bought it fair and square, like orcs are treated kind of like shit in this world um, because they're orcs. She's stunned um, when she meets him um, that her, her dad has sold her to an orc. Her dad has told her like, I won't be able to pay our servants. I won't be able to pay anybody on our land if you don't go through with this. And so she's like, okay, like, I'm all right. She, um, yeah, oh. he's such a, uh, I want to want to punch him so many, he, he gets, he gets worse. But so she asks if she can have a minute alone with, um, with her new orc husband to talk to him before um, the, the selling off happens. And what she's worried about is that he's going to see her and see that she's tall and um, not like willowy and be not interested in, in it at all. And, be, and so she wants to talk to him alone and be like, hey, like this has to happen. What turns out, this is probably one of the reasons I love this book so much is um, she's 30 and has no idea how sex works at all. Like she's got nothing, oh. not even, like nothing, oh, um, no. like it, never seen a penis, never. And in their first meeting together, he's like, she asks if she can see him because, you know, she doesn't know what she's getting into. She sees his erect penis and asks if she can touch it. And she, she pets it like a puppy is how Ruby describes it. And she's like, oh, it's so soft. And he's like, I can assure you it's not. <laughs> And then, and then after they have like, oh, she's like, okay, I'll do this. Like, uh, like I'm interested. He seems kind. Like, even though he's half, a, she gets out of the room and her, her dad's taken the money and fucked off and said, well, you're, you're his problem now. Wow. So <laughs> Fuck that Rick. 
Great. So, uh, not literally. Um, he doesn't deserve it. Fair. Um, totally fair. Yeah. Agricor, I think that's how his name is pronounced. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm not good at those kind of things. Is going to insist on a traditional marriage ceremony. So everybody in the town like believes that he's married this lady. Which there's three steps. There's the revealing of the bride. There's the tasting of the bride, and and I forget what the third one is. <laughs> but uh, um, the revealing of the bride is where she has to like come before his entire clan and take off her clothes, and so he gets to see oh, like that she's pl- pleasing to him. And then the tasting of the bride, she's really worried he's gonna eat her. <laughs> Not the way she thinks, probably. <laughs> um, and it ha- has to be done with um with like a steward watching over to make sure that like she's happy it's a female steward but she just like sits in the oh. corner is is drunk um and it's just it's sweet it's spicy it's funny and then like halfway through the orc's dad shows up and it was like no you have to marry her in the orc tradition as well which is chasing her through the woods and and so he's like i guess it's so complicated <laughs> like- <laughs> so and the whole time she's just like this is great like nobody told me this is what sex was like can we keep doing this and like like sneak away and like um she's just so sex positive and so like like I want to try everything like can we stop having all of these ceremonies please and and that's um I'll stop there because you should read it and um it this I've read this book um I will not admit to how many times um but this is definitely a comfort read. I can read it in an evening. If I'm stressed out, it'll be like, it's time for Half Orcs Maiden Bride. I love definitely, that. definitely one of my favorite orc books. Awesome. I awesome. I love That's, that. so That's hilarious. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, when he tries to explain oral sex to her, he's like, he takes her hand and he licks it and he like licks her knuckles and he's like, That's what I'm going to do. And she's never, she's never had an orgasm. She's never seen. She's never oh, seen honey. anybody have sex. She she all she's ever seen is horses, and so she thinks that's how it's going to happen. And so she is having... wanted to see what his dick looked like. Yeah, yeah. So and then the for, their first time ends up being in a cave because of the chasing, um, which I'm a big fan of. Obviously, <laughs> it's really good. It's, yeah, she um, she is one of the worst kinds of late bloomers. My goodness, poor thing. I I know, I know. But hey, if she has positive experiences, that's the important thing. And he's so kind and like he's ne- she's never kissed, she's never and he's like so kind and so infatuated with her and thinks she's beautiful because even though she's tall, he's like you're you're tall and you're muscular and she takes this like abandoned manor house and she cleans it like she gets a staff and like makes real food come out of the kitchen she's like a she wants to be that and that's in at the end ruby is like i wanted to write a character that that's what they wanted it's yeah there's a reason it's a comfort read i love that i like it i love yeah that's great that's great so there is another author that writes orcs that she is newer to writing orcs she just started putting out orcs this fall and that's zoe ashwood and she writes the black black bear clan series um and there's three that are out so far um i have arc read all all three of them and um they're very light and quick um and spicy i enjoy them a heck of a lot they do have very similar vibes to um half orcs maiden bride but it's uh, the orcs rescue human women that are either like down on their luck or um are not being taken care of by the human men in their life and then um there's faded mates situation obviously and so each each woman is a faded mate of the orcs and i really want her to expand on this series i like it so far but i would love to see like more of the world like i've only feel like i've gotten glimpses of it so she said she was only doing three but then i've been like messaging her and she's like no there's more and i'm like okay good because i'm here for this <laughs> so if you need a good light place to start these are definitely light they're not they're not finley finn to start with orcs i would definitely re- recommend the the black Blair clan by zoe ashwood um i like those a lot and those or like a read in an afternoon spicy orc situation. Hi, everybody. My name is Carlotta Hughes, and I write about spicy Scottish space orcs. Yay. Um, <laughs> this was originally uh, Thorn's Dove is the prequel. Um, I had originally started writing Ruger's Pearl like about a year and a half ago, uh, and I stopped because my 
writing group that I was in, the Degenerate Syndicate, we decided we were going to do an anthology. So I, it's called, it was called Big Feels. It was a charity anthology. All the proceeds went to um, water.orgs for clean water. I wrote Thorn stuff for that because I figured there should be a prequel with some intro stuff as to how this all works. And then once uh, the rights reverted, I expanded it to be a full 65,000 word novel. And it deals with Thorn, who is actually an orc prince of the clan Octolore on a planet called Talum, which is across the universe. And they have these massive trees called Cronabea, which are, um, they have wings and there's portals on the inside of them that will connect to another portal um, elsewhere in the universe. So he goes through one, all the gates were supposed to be broken, but he manages to go through this one. He gets washed ashore. Ruth is a ex-hippie from, she used to be in a commune, had a really rough time of it. Um, like the FBI raided the commune and so she got herself clean and she unfortunately needed a, an abortion um and that was something that i wanted to talk about it in, in this in what year are we in 1973 so this is just post roe v wade and uh getting passed because roe v wade was repealed last year i wanted to talk about it and write it in a very respectful and sensitive manner so i um, because I know people who have needed to get them for various reasons. And I wanted to honor that experience. There was that. And she, Ruth finds had, okay, her parents died. They had died in a car crash. She got the, her whole inheritance and she threw everything into a coastal farm that was dilapidated on the California coast, uh, north of San Francisco and decided she was going to create a Tolkien bed and breakfast with hobbit hole little rooms little spaces so she's starting this she's like oh shit this is a lot more than i thought it was going to be finds thorn washed up on her beach basically nurses him back to health makes the connection that oh this is probably an orc because tolkien <laughs> <laughs> well done yeah and then uh the rest of the book is just about how she's trying to create this bed and breakfast thorn helps her because on his planet orcs will basically build their mate a home to have a family in and so he knows how to build things so he helps her build everything and while he's there he'd lost his cloak or ring which uh allows him to look human while on earth so he's walking around looking like a like a giant orcish lumber snack and there's an fbi agent that keeps coming by and harassing ruth yeah. that's fucking weird you did a really he's good weird. job making him fucking weird yeah, yeah. i was agent creeped sim. out by him agent sim yeah. he had so many issues a lot of issues yeah. mainly he was dabbing lsd a lot he this gave off mad serial killer vibes like he mad really serial killer vibes yeah by yeah. the way mm -hmm. he's not gone no <laughs> <laughs> we'll eventually come back around in the series just so you guys are aware he's not gone he's just missing for the time being is this like smith from the matrix <laughs> he just keeps showing up mm, for a short that's stint. actually how i picture him is smith is, right yeah. i'm so glad it wasn't that's just what i me. was thinking of when i read it <laughs> Fuck. That, that's what i was thinking I've of when i read that. him that's a movie i've seen <laughs> <laughs> and anyway they're trying to fight off this agent who's trying to get a hold of the the gata the the gate between the two the portals yeah portal. portal. he's weirdly obsessed with ruth like in a weird vibe yeah yeah. yeah yeah weird stalker vibes definitely yeah. some heavy breathing down the yeah. phone uh yeah that was Phone harassment. Okay, can I just say, as, as someone, I've read this book. Okay, as this was one of the Multiple first times, times yeah, that I Thank read you. a book where the content warnings were so um, explicit and extensive that I was like, I wouldn't even think to warn someone against that. And it was the phone thing. Uh, you, you have that in your content warnings of like creepy yes. phone stalking. And mm -hmm. And I was like, wouldn't even think to warn someone of that. I'm, I'm happy you did. Like that, that's an example of really caring for your reader of like really being like, hey, just so you know, if you've had someone phone stalk you, you might want to skip this. And I'm, I'm going to show that part real quick. So Carlotta, you can hide under your blanket like an awkward turtle if you like. This yeah, is in the she, beginning. Uh -huh. <laughs> but that you've, you've also got it in the back as well. Yeah. Um, Amazon it, sucks because they, 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 
if, if any trigger warning or content warning is in the front, then they will flag it and they won't want to publish it. So I put this, which says go in the back of the book. And then yeah, the back and of the book. If she breaks it down by chapter as to which I didn't what... figure out until I finished the book because I'm stupid, but it, it was nice. But um, I've never seen anybody else do that. I personally loved that. Mm-hmm. And I think more people should because you know, for some people, content awareness that is a a warning list i should stay away from these things for other people it's a shopping list right i want to read about this stuff so here we go and one thing for everybody too is if you're reading my books and the table of contents you will see like chapters with an asterisk asterisk. which is also here in the chapter itself that means that there are you need to look in the back for content warnings so that way as you're reading you you know what's coming blindsided you can you're like oh there is an asterisk I should check what the content warnings are for this chapter because I don't want it to be like the story's going along really great and then all of a sudden someone is hit with something that just floors them Mm -hmm. I want to be like hey this chapter I don't I want you to be rather safe than sorry you did a great job with it I absolutely love that part yeah someone who doesn't trust authors sometimes that like this is a new author and all of a sudden there's like enslavement and I've had no warning I'm like really really also all the trigger warnings are uh, broken down by chapter on my website too so Mm -hmm. that they're there and I know that that sound it, when I when I saw the way that you did that I was like wow that must be a lot of work but then going through the process of editing your next book with you by the time that a book gets out you've read it so many times it is really not hard to pull and be like this chapter's got this this chapter's got this this chapter like it's yeah. a very straightforward process. I mean usually while I'm formatting and doing the final read through is when I do it so it doesn't really take yeah. that much extra time like I've been doing yeah. that right now for Ruger's Kriya is I've been going through doing the final read through and formatting both the ebook and the paperback at the same time. And so I just mm-hmm. add in the content warnings. Also, so everybody is aware, this is, so the orcs are, are spicy Scottish space orcs. They speak with a Scottish brogue and their language, um, ding a doof, is based off of Scots Gaelic. There's why I can't pronounce any of the There's words. a pronunciation guide in the back that Jen ignores all the time. Yeah, and there's and there's links on the ebook and on my website to um so this is this is gonna be funny when i was doing this and i was doing research i wanted to get audio clips because scott's gaelic at gaelic in general you look at it and if you're a native english speaker you're like how did those letters make uh-huh. that sound together i'm not sure how i contacted the website learngaelic.scott which is evidently a branch of the bbc and was like i know this is gonna come in like a wrecking ball but i write about spicy scottish space orcs and i was wondering could i please could i please link to your audio clips for my pronunciation guide on my website and evidently i gave them a real good laugh and they said yes <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. You can get the audio audio links and yes. So if you're not a reader like me who just skips over words she can't pronounce, you have multiple ways to make sure you're pronouncing things correctly. By the way, anybody, if you speak Scots Gaelic or you read it and I have written something that is not correct, please let me know so I can... <laughs> So I can fix that. So do you want to tell us any more about uh, Thorn's Dove or leave it as is? Well, um, there's a whole thing about faded mates and what are called mm-hmm. Kriya. Um, it's C-R-I-D-H-E and that means so heart. Creed he. Creed he. Or, <laughs> but it's pronounced Kriya and it means heart and it is the term for faded mates. They have basically stopped existing on Talum, there's this whole thing between Thorn and Ruth of there's a lot of acceptance that happens and a lot of trauma healing. That's something that I'm really big on in all of my books. But they have basically said, like, we're Kriya, even if the, the mating marks which show up on your chest, um, mm-hmm. and they match for the most part. Um, if they haven't shown up, you're human though, so that's probably why. <laughs> but yeah, so there's that. Uh so faded mates, uh Thorn, the, Thorn is a teddy bear, so there's Toucher and Die mm-hmm. vibes, uh-huh. but also a major cinnamon roll. There's local deputies. Uh, there's a deputy and a sheriff that are just really cute. Uh, there's a lot of coming together of the community. Fun stuff. Yeah, it was really good. As, and as a first also, support. you know, hu- hu- humming with the dick in your mouth. That's fun. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. I mm-hmm. forgot about that scene. That's oh, cool. yeah. They have knots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so um, we are actually going to be doing another mini sode where we talk about um, Ruger's Pearl, which is the first official book in um, Carlotta series that just came out. And it is such a chunky boy that it needs its own mini sode. It, we're, I'm 600, so we are going to give it its own mini sode. Um, and also because we love orcs so fucking much, we just can't not. We're going to cover um, that book, uh, the book she's currently working on and then um my uh orc book which i am also in the process of writing and a couple other ones we're that so we, proud uh, <laughs> a couple of the other ones that we have not gotten to so thank you so much for joining us um this was i was waiting for this episode until we started this podcast so yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> go find yourself an orc uh we gave you plenty of options uh trash cats out mm-hmm.